Hi guys, welcome to our third varsity board meeting of the year. Obviously this meeting is virtual. During the pandemic last year when all of our meetings were virtual, we had several requests from students to do at least one virtual meeting a year for those students that have Sunday evening conflicts or live a little bit further away and it's harder for them to make it to a meeting. So this serves as our one virtual meeting this year. It worked out that we've had some snow days that I hope all of you got to enjoy. Um, so hopefully you like this video that you get to watch this time and we have some great content to share. So you will have until when this video gets emailed to you on Sunday until Wednesday at 7 p.m. to watch this video for your attendance credit. And to receive that credit, all you have to do is email me at allison, A-L-L-Y-S-O-N, at Cleats for Kids, C-L-E-A-T-S-F-O-R, K-I-D-S dot org and let me know that you watched this video and I will give you your attendance credit. I wanted to quickly remind you all about the requirements in order to apply for the varsity board next year, and those are that you must attend at least two of our four varsity board meetings, so watching this today counts as one of those, and then you must complete at least four service hours either at a Cleats for Kids event, in our locker room, or through one of the volunteer opportunities that I provide. If you need an update on how many meetings you've attended or how many hours you've completed thus far, please let me know um, because we do only have one meeting after this um, and I know sometimes you need your hours before the end of the school year. So please email me and I can give you an update on where you're standing. I do want to remind you that one great way to get all four of your hours is to host a collection drive. You can do that at your school, through your church, to another group you're a part of, um, maybe just with your family. All you have to do is let me know that you want to do that. Through a school, you need to get permission um, to host a collection drive, and then let me know what you need. We can provide all of the collection boxes, posters, flyers, whatever you guys need, and we even have social media posts that you can post to go along with that to make it the most successful drive. I wanted to give a shout out to a few students who either have hosted a drive in the past couple weeks or their drive is coming up. Um, like I said, those students have already received their four hours for doing this, and they are helping so many kids by collecting sports gear for them. So I wanted to give a shout out to Isabel Charnico, Rachel Dioniso, Ainsley Greenhaw, Mackenzie Ellis, Skylar Guaneri, Marissa Angeles, Matthew Smith, Katie Koch, Elysium Gary, Kylan Carey, Brooklyn Hawkins, and Camden Hawkins. Thank you guys so much for hosting a drive and I hope that encourages many more of you to do so as well. Now I get to introduce our awesome speaker for this meeting. His name is Larry Lemon. Larry and Susie Lemon have been great friends of Cleats for Kids and they've helped us do amazing things with many of our programs. They've also been fantastic leaders in our community and have made a difference in so many lives. Larry, one of his big things is he likes to share with younger generations about what it means to give back and why that's important. And it was very important that he wanted to share with our varsity board students um, that message. So without further ado, I'm I want to introduce our guest speaker for this meeting, Larry Lemon. You know, Susie and I have been very fortunate. We we grew up in good homes. Uh, we grew up with two loving parents. Went to public schools. Graduated from the University of Oklahoma, and so we got a good start in life, and that's been very fortunate for us. Susie and I never had to struggle, and so my freshman year of college. I learned a lot, and not all of it was in the classroom. I kind of really began to compare myself to some of the other freshmen around there, and I realized how good I had it growing up. So when I was home at uh, Christmas break, one night at the dinner table, I told my parents, I said, you know, I've, I'm really beginning to realize what a good family we've got, and how good we have it compared to a lot of the other kids. And I want to say thank you for all you've done for me. And what can I do to repay you? They kind of smiled and began to realize I was growing up. And they said, you know, you need to be responsible for yourself and your actions. And you don't have owe us anything. What you need to do is to help the next generation succeed. And that's how you can pay us back is by helping the next generation. So being retired and financially secure, it's, 
it's a real joy to be able to give to various organizations. And it gives us a warm, fuzzy feeling to be able to see the kids kind of excel and beam and have pride when they, when they get a new pair of shoes. You know, they, they're able to be on their track team or when a young girl gets a new coat or a new uniform and the pride she has in it and, and uh, know that uh, she'll be able to do good things. It's, it's really amazing what a new coat or a new pair of shoes or a new uniform does. It, it can change their whole attitude and their whole way of life. And it gives them hope and encouragement. And with, with that, magical things can happen. And it, you know, if you can tap into the passion of what they're wanting to do, what, what their, their interest is in school, and a lot of them, sports is their interest. You get them where, where they're, they're participating and they feel good about themselves with it, all of a sudden that shows up in their schoolwork. And all of a sudden education gets to be fun. And when it's fun, then you, you learn more. You're not fighting it. With a, with a good education, you can get a good job, you can work hard. And you know, it doesn't come by accident that you live a good life and succeed and, and, and are able to do good things. In addition to providing monetary or tangible resources, it's fun to work with the students and kind of be a mentor to, mentor to them and, and to help them and coach them and give them little, uh, little tidbits on, on a way to lead a good life. You can help break the cycle of poverty. Uh, you can teach them they don't have to accept the circumstances they're in. Uh, you can teach them that they can control their own attitude, their own efforts. And with good attitude and good effort, they can succeed and do great things. When I have a chance to work with a group of students, I like to give them a little one sentence what I call pearls of wisdom to live by. It's things they might remember and, and it can influence their attitude and their lives. And being as I've been in road building all my life, one of the pearls of wisdom that I've lived by is, is what Arnold Palmer said. He says, the road to success is always under construction. And if you can teach him, you know, don't ever quit is there's always better things to do. Uh, you must keep working and improve and get better. The, the success is always under construction. And another saying I like to give them is, you're never wrong if you do the right thing. And it's, it kind of tells them, you know, you gotta have a conscience and there's consequences to your actions. But they need to do the right thing even when nobody's looking. And then my, uh, my favorite saying that I always end up with at the end of a, a mentoring session is, nothing good happens after midnight. And I've lived by that. And I tell them, you know, go to parties, go out with your friends, have a good time, but help you and your friends get home on time because nothing good happens after midnight. You know, in, in the Bible, in the book of March, Mark, there's a verse that goes kind of like, unto those that much is given, much is expected. And Susie and I have been very fortunate and we've had much given to us. And so we're glad that, that we can give back and, and do great things. You know, to, to you and me, it might just be another pair of shoes. It might just be one more thing in our wardrobe. But to these students, it's respect and recognition. It might just change their lives. And for them to have a little hope and to be the best, it's a good attitude and it gives them a little extra. I've got one more motto to give you and then I'll quit. Susie and I really use this one kind of as our philosophy and it goes a hundred years from now, it really won't matter what the size of my bank account was or the kind of car I drove or the house I lived in, but that I was important 
and the world may be a little better place because I was important in the life of a child. We've been very fortunate and uh, the Lord gave us some nice talents to be able to, to make some financial resources and it's, it's great to be able to share those. And you know, y'all got the direct contact and if we can help, help y'all succeed, we succeed. Susie and I are glad to help Cleats for Kids. It's nice to help be part of the team Y'all keep up the good work. I hope you all enjoyed that message from Larry Lemon and um, really took those nuggets of wisdom to heart about the importance of giving back to your community. We have so many exciting things going on at Cleats for Kids right now. As you all know, being a part of the varsity board also means that you're an ambassador for Cleats for Kids. I hope that when someone asks you, why are you on the varsity board or what is Cleats for Kids? You can give them a strong answer about why you give back to your community and why you are a young philanthropist and can share a little bit about the amazing work that Cleats for Kids is doing across our state. So I wanted to give you a few program updates um, so you guys kind of know what what's going on in our locker room and beyond and can hopefully share those um, with friends and other people that you interact with. The first program I wanted to hit on is our Simon Greiner track and field program. As many of you know, this program was started five years ago by the Greiner family in memory of their son, Simon, and they wanted his legacy to live on through the sport of running, and tr it truly has. This program is now in all Oklahoma City high schools and middle schools, and this track season we will pr be providing uh, running trainers, running socks, and track spikes to over 500 Oklahoma City athletes, which is so so exciting. Another program I wanted to mention is the YMCA third and fourth grade league. This program kicked off last spring. It was in 12 elementary schools and it was just soccer and we provided all of the cleats to those students that needed them to play. In the fall we picked up flag football, volleyball, and cross country and served about 330 athletes. This winter for basketball and cheer we served over 500 kids with basketball, cho basketball shoes and cheer shoes and this spring we're set to serve over a thousand kids with soccer, volleyball, and track and field. I really hope you guys get to be a part of one of these shoe distributions for these third and fourth graders. It's so amazing to see and they are absolutely so excited to play in their new shoes. Another program I wanted to update you all on is our Power Play Pack program. Um, this one, I hope you guys remember at our last meeting, you got to see what goes in these Power Play Packs. It's a huge pack of all the fun PE equipment you can think of. Balls, cones, scooters, jump ropes, hula hoops, bean bags, all those things you used to use during elementary PE, we put in one big pack and distribute them to elementary schools across the metro area. During our last meeting, you all got to break out into small groups and create fun activities to use as equipment with. I took all those ideas, made them into cards, and made a booklet for every single school that receives one of our power play packs. So all of your ideas are being put into use each day across the metro area in PE classes. So congratulations to you all and thank you for all of your help with that program. We are still working with the Police Athletic League across the metro. Several other of our other programs, as you know, keep going and keep growing. And then also in our locker room, the place where you guys get to come volunteer so often, we see so many families, so many kids, um, and are having record number of locker room visits this month. So thank you guys for all of your work. I just wanted to give you kind of a quick program update of what's going on at Cleats for Kids for you to know and for you to share. I can't believe we are already in almost into March and the spring semester is just flying by. I wanted to do kind of a fun interactive activity for you all and as an extra way to help you get some extra service hours. So when I send the recap email from this meeting, I'm gonna send what I'm calling a Cleats for Kids bingo card. There are gonna be different activities for you to participate in. You have the opportunity to receive up to four bingos and each bingo is worth two service hours. So if you get a blackout, if you can fill all of the bingo card with all the different activities you can participate in, you could receive eight service hours, which is awesome. Some of these activities are easy, as easy as liking something on our social media or doing a collection drive or coming and doing a service day in our locker room. 
We will have a variety of things you can participate in, and it's going to be an extra special way for you to share what you're doing at Cleats for Kids and to get those most important service hours. I wanted to give a couple announcements of dates coming up so you all can get those on your calendar. We will have our next volunteer day at the Cleats for Kids locker room after school from 3.30 to 5 on Tuesday, March 1st and Wednesday, March 2nd. If you would like to participate in one of those volunteer days, please email me and I will put you on the list. I also wanted to let you guys know that our last meeting of the year is Sunday, April 24th at 5 p.m. This will be a very special meeting that you will not want to miss. We will be celebrating our awesome seniors as well as um, giving out our four-year service awards. Like I said, April 24th, 5 p.m., make sure that's out your calendar, and as soon as I get my location confirmed, um, I will send that out as well. I also, we will ha be having a couple other dates that will be coming up, um, some volunteer opportunities through that YMCA program that I mentioned earlier, as well as through the Oklahoma City Marathon. In the past, we've done things with the Kids Marathon, and that will also be a volunteer opportunity for you all to look out for. Thank you guys so much for watching this virtual meeting. I hope that you enjoyed all of the content that we shared. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, or ideas, please feel free to email me and I will be happy to help you. Thank you guys.